Sunday Showcase, highlighting some of the best audio storytelling found anywhere. All right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The listeners who were listening to the previous adventures of Flash Gordon will remember the adventures that Flash Gordon had previously. For the rest of you, let me refresh your memory. In our previous adventures, Flash Gordon reviewed the legions of the Blue Magic Men under his command. And Dr. Prince Zarkov blasted the rock which sealed the entrance to the Blue Magic Land and discovered that his ears were of no use in learning what happened to Flash and Dale and Thoon. He sent a spy named Mar, equipped with a portable space phone and one space charging cable to obtain the information. Mar gained entrance to the palace of Queen Azura and contacted Thune and Dale. They informed him of Flash's peculiar behavior. At the same time, Zarkov tried to call Mar, the spy, via the space phone, but neither was able to get a signal as Mongo's Wi-Fi is spotty at best. At that moment, the army of blue magic men attacked the Hawkmen, and Zarkov ordered his soldiers into battle. These thrilling adventures come to you as they are pictured each Sunday in the Comic Weekly, the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The Big Comic Weekly, each page printed in full big colors, distributed everywhere as an integral part of the Hearst Sunday newspaper. And now we continue the story. Flash and Queen Azura watch the Hawkmen as they dive toward the army of the Blue Magic Men. Here, here come the Hawkmen, my prince. I see them, Azura. I was just wondering which battery I should train on them. We used all the batteries last night, remember? I suggest you use the guns of the combustion ray machine, my dear. It is particularly flashy. What will happen if I do? <laughs> Order them to be used and see. Very well. Old men, bring the combustion ray guns into action. The ray guns are quite ready, sir. Ready? No. Are they ready? No. It's a warranty issue. We're on hold with tech services. Can't we just get to the part where they're ready? Wait. Really not ready, no. Then get ready and fire. Hold on, utterly unprepared here. Come on, guys. Ready? And then we're firing, right? Yes, ready. Oh, not in the slightest. <laughs> and as for firing, no. Are we ready for that? Uh, we might be, but I, I hate to rush into things unprepared. You know what you're doing? Uh, ready and fire, correct? Yes, ready. And fire. And fire. <laughs> oh, fire. Oh, no, that's a, a completely different button, you know. <laughs> but we're not quite there yet. <laughs> ready? Yes. And you may fire. Hello? What's happening now? Oh, good news! We can fire now! Finally! Fire! Uh, but just to clarify, it's aimed at the- Fire! Okay! By the moons of Mongo! What are you doing, man? Now you see, my prince, what the combustion ray machines do. Yes, a little too close, Azura. They belch out flaming death. Yes, those Hawkmen cluttering my view can't survive this devastating heat. Look, look, they are already dropping to the ground like birds with damaged wings that have also been shot. All right, my queen. Oh, Saul. Oh, yes, my prince. Yeah, let them have it again. Fire. Fire, you say? Fire. <laughs> but we're not quite there yet. <laughs> Ready? Enemies are dropping like startled sparrow sire, swiftly succumbing to scorching shots, spiraling sorrowfully, sinking sadly to the solid surface, silenced by searing strikes. Blended shooting, my prince. If alliteration was a weapon, those Hawkman creatures would be easily subdued, Azura. 
Be careful you don't kill them all, Flash. Remember, I'm always able to use a few more for my theater extravaganza. Ah, uh, yes, those disturbing plays that you put on for me. Listen, um, I don't think we really need to use these Hawkmen in another revival of moose murders. They are not merely plays. They are theater. My beautiful Azura, I can conquer these gnat-like intruders and turn them over to you as you wish, but please, no more theater. How brave and strong you are, my prince. It's not about love or bravery, Azura. It's about my undying devotion. Ah, you do love me, then. You do not realize that already, my gorgeous queen? You will, when this battle is ended, eh? <laughs> we'll see. Death to the invaders! Fire again! Fine! Fire again! Uh, uh, fire again! Uh, ready? In the meantime, on the other side of the flaming barrage, Zarkov holds an anxious conference with one of the officers of the remaining Hawkmen. Signal your men to retreat, Captain. There's nothing to be gained by flying into their fire. Oh, very well, Prince Sarkov. Uh, Fugler, sound retreat. Um, what are we to do now, Prince Sarkov? First of all, hire an actual bugler. After that, I do not know yet. Hmm. What could have happened to Flash? We tried to rescue him, and he seemed to give orders to shoot Armin down. Hmm. Why would he do that? Eh, well, I'd swear I saw him raise a part of his body I won't mention, and uh, give the signal that brought this sea of flame pouring on us, Prince Arkov. Can he be? <gasps> oh, no, impossible. Hey, by the way, can you please tell them to stop singing? Can he be what, Your Highness? And yes, I can. Who does? Stop! I dare not even utter the thought, Captain. Not until I am certain. And thank you. If I might suggest, uh, Doctor, something must be done about our safety. These flames are sweeping this way. I mean, soon they'll engulf us all. Uh, don't mention it. Uh, the flames? Oh, yes. Yes, the flames. Oh, yes. Um, lead the men into that tunnel, Hawkman. The tunnel? Dr. Zarkov, there's, there's no place to, to throw a barricade to keep out the flame. Leave that to me. How do we seal it? With science! <laughs> Order those turbine thermostats. Roll them just inside the tunnel entrance. But, um... <clears throat> but they will not completely close the opening, Doctor. Um, oh, if only we had some uh, stone or uh, a plan. What? Stones to let them become heated and roast us all? No. Do as I say. I will keep the heat out. You will never feel those flames. I have a way to fight them until they die out. Yes, uh, your highness, doctor. What if the turbines don't hold? I mean, what, what if your chemical concoction doesn't work? Are you so stupid that I must make a blueprint of my plan of defense? Wait, where is this coming from? Hurry, fool. Good lord. Why are you being so hostile? Oh, very well then. Look, if I must give you every detail, into those turbine thermostats, I will put this chemical powder made from a secret formula of my own invention. <laughs> I literally just thought of it now. When we are all inside, I shall turn on the turbine thermostats and block the entrance with a wall of solid... Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ice. While the battle rages, let us go back to the palace of Azura. There we find Dale and Thune and the space spy Mar. Why to begin, Mar? Calling Prince Zarkov. Captain Mar, calling Prince Zarkov. Captain Moore, calling Prince Zarkov! How does that work? Oh, what do you mean? You're just standing there, cupping your hand by your mouth and shouting. You never know, he could hear me. Calling Prince Zarkov! Captain Moore, calling Prince Zarkov! Calling... Oh. Thune, Moore, look out! The guard! Stop shouting, Moore. 
Here comes the guard. Guard, what shall we do to hide? Pull your cloak over your head so your cloak hides it. Play up to whatever I say. Flash's life depends on it, Mar. All right, I will play along. All right, well, what's going on here? Why nothing, guard? This traveler is simply spinning around rapidly in place, trying to pour this glass of very hot water. See? Oh, you expect me to believe he was just spinning around fast, then pouring that glass, eh? That doesn't seem like a reason to be screaming like he was. Oh, it doesn't. Does it, Constable? Uh, no. Well, that is because you missed the part where he ran over these marbles and bananas to get the boiling water from over there by that cactus-like bush. <laughs> he ran over there, did he? How? Like this. Traveler, show this observant guard how you ran across the marbles and bananas now. Oh, yes, let's see it then. Ow. Oh, ow. I All right, so he fell a few times. That still doesn't... And his cries of pain ensued. Then he put on this magic cactus suit while untangling from the sharp spikes of the cactus-like bush yonder. Here, traveler, put on the cactus suit again. No, take it. Put it on for this unbelieving enforcement officer. Yes, that's it. It is a magic suit that dances on its own. Come on, Traveler. Show how that heavy spiked suit forced you to kiss an inanimate object passionately before breaking into wild dance moves, tangling you into a hilarious mess with everything around you. Well, I have to admit that does look painful and embarrassing. Regard his face as he dances. The sweaty face of a humiliated man in pain. And at the time you heard his cries, it was even worse. For he was wearing this. Can I have that, Dale? Ooh, that's a rat. Huh? He was wearing this sentient wig on his head, officer. That's a live feral rat, Thune. This sentient wig that claws, bites, and leaps from his head at the least opportune moments, leading him on a frantic chase through various obstacles, over jagged barbed wire fences, through Chinese wet markets, and maybe even atop this flaming unicycle. See? Here, Mar, here. Relax now. No more proving to this fine guard you were innocently being hurt and yelling. See, I'm now bringing the traveler over to this large window for some air. It isn't everyone who can stand this intense pain, guard. Look at our traveler now, soaked in blood. They all can't be as strong as we are. Well, that's true. I didn't think he was screaming in pain, but maybe he was. Huh? I just thought I heard a pre-nut sound and a voice calling out for Dr. Zarkov, a man wanted by Emperor Ming. What's a pre-nut sound? No idea. But ah, uh, yes, yes, I'm afraid you did. Oh, Thune! What was the meaning of it? Ah, well, our traveler here merely also caught a contagious yodel that echoes every time he speaks, causing uproarious confusion in public gatherings. Let me open this window. Ah, see, traveler! All the soldiers and dignitaries of Mongo are gathered below in the courtyard as they were when this happened. Show the guard how your loud yodeling attempts to communicate led to musical mayhem, and the way your yodel causes a chain reaction of singing animals, dancing furniture, and a choir of bewildered bystanders below. Uh, soon. Remember, you wanted to tell our armed guard here how it happened. So, show them, as Flash's life depends on it. <sighs> Little old lady. <laughs> okay, I see now that he's a deeply troubled traveler. I am sure he appreciates all you're doing to convince me of his innocence, since he does not speak the language of Mongo. Yes, I do. Yes. Yes, he does. All right, then. I need to get back on patrol. 
Of course, of course, sir. Though I am sure he deeply regrets not confessing what he was doing at exactly the moment you heard him. Oh? Why? What was he doing? Why, he was telling us tales of his life as a misguided magician whose tricks comically backfire on him, resulting in injuries. Watch! Ow! Why did the traveler hit you? He am a... Uh, where he is from, it's a greeting. Oh, well, in that case, hello, weary traveler. <clears throat> oh, uh, Dale, take the guard over there and turn him with his back to me. Yes, Thune. Yes, of course. Come over here, guard. Okay, bye, weary traveler. <clears throat> no tricks now, or you'll taste me electric whip. Mar, say what you said earlier. I'm not playing along on anything ever again. Captain Mar calling Prince Zarkov. Very well, Thun. Calling Prince Zarkov! Captain Mar! Ow! What was that for? Now then, guard. Was that what you heard? Ah, uh, yes, that was it. Watch out, slaves. You may accidentally get hurt and scream before we can do it to you ourselves. <laughs> oh, 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 I almost forgot. <clears throat> oh! I don't want to seem rude, traveler. Thank you. Yes, of course. Oh, that was quick thinking, Thune. <gasps> Thune. You. Well, Thune, I thought you took an awful risk in lying to the guard like that at first. What about me? Going along with all that? To deny the improv would have been foolhardy, Mar. If you're going to deceive someone, it's all about the depth of character immersion. Yes, and I'll remember that. The scars will remind me, too. But there's one situation I can't handle so easily. The one we're in. Standing and just yelling Zarkov's name isn't going to work to find him. How are we going to get word to Zarkov? Actually, I've got that all taken care of, Captain Thune. You have? How will you do it? Why didn't you tell us this earlier? I myself will take the information to him. Oh my. You'll never get to Zarkov alive. They won't let you out. Oh, yes they will. Who let me in here? That would be Saul. The Sorcerer-in-Chief and Azura's mystical aide-de-camp. So, your grand plan is to have Saul just open the gates for you. But Saul's not here. He's away with the army. He is? Well, then that makes things all the easier. Be careful, Mar. These men are devils. They have powers and methods never seen before. After what Thune just put me through, there's nothing more they can do to harm me. Don't mention it. Really. Sure. I hate you. Do not fear, Princess. Saul was the only one I spoke to about getting in here. I saw to it that we had a private conference. So? So nobody will doubt my word when I say that I was to join Saul outside after I rested. It may work, if they're incredibly stupid. Oh, it will. It must. Mar? Yes, Princess? See that no harm comes to Flash. Just Zarkov. Zarkov? Why? I thought you liked him. I do. I, I do. Zarkov may not understand what Flash actually does, or how he is normally. I understand, Princess. I shall explain everything to Zarkov. And if you should be captured by the Blue Magic Man, find out what hold Azura the Witch Queen has over Flash, and try to break the spell. If that is to be my fate, Princess, you may rest assured I will carry out my mission. Great. Then I am done here. I am off to the restaurant. Ming's return for some more fine dining where Ming often takes a chair and joins the diners to outline in detail his latest medical procedure. What are you planning on leaving, Mar? Well, if I try to leave now, it may be very difficult. I shall wait and take my departure tonight as armed guards are everywhere. No. Try to leave now. Come on. Play along. <clears throat> okay. I totally deserve that. You got your blood on my mane. Leaving our friends for the moment, let us return to the tunnel where Prince Zarkov and his Hawkmen have withdrawn to escape the terrible heat of the combustion ray machine. As the Hawkmen flee into the tunnel, Flash and his officers pursue them, only to be stopped short at the entrance by a wall of solid... Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. 
ice. And speaking of ice, this chilling tale is brought to you by Ice Inc. Incorporated. Through the modern marvels of ice, beverages can now be cooled exclusively with our product. Say goodbye to that hot toddy. Embrace the new cold toddy marvel of the modern age. Our ice laughs in the face of warmth, the savior to your beverages. Ice, not just any ice, but the coldest, most refreshing crystalline wonder. Ice from Ice Inc. Incorporated. Great for parties, social events, or your regular family get-together. Delivered to your doorstep, available in cubed, crushed, or block. Our ice is so cold we even use it to keep our own ice frozen. Ice! Try it! Not available in Youngstown, Ohio. While Flash and his companions organize outside the entrance to the tunnel, Saul and Azura remain behind the lines. Of course, your fleeting eminence knows best, but my advice for us... I am not asking your advice, Saul. Oh, that I am well aware of your meandering majesty. But must I lose the privilege of an old and faithful retainer? Distracted Highness, do not let your personal feelings entrap you. My personal feelings? What do you mean? Your Majesty has taken a fancy to this young unknown. Oh, please, Saul. I mean no offense. Your tedious splendor is a consort and companion used to living without criticism. But is he the best thing for our land? You mean, will he make a good king? If your majesty thinks of him in terms of king, then yes, I mean, will he make a good king? Why are you making that pumping gesture? You know, you two are always doing the, uh... Enough! You make it sound more crass than it is. I am sure he will make a very hard king, Sol. How can we trust your certainty about Flash Gordon now? Flash has protected his love from me day after day. Why, even when the attack began, you heard him say he was repelling it. Not to show his bravery or strength, but to prove his devotion to me. I was not speaking of his personal assurances, your tedious splendor. Well, speaking of what then? Of his ability to handle the legions at his disposal. When the attack began, did he not confess himself to be in a quandary as to which battery he should train on them? A careful general always surveys his position. Oh yes, I know he's tried every position. But he brought all of the battery fire down on himself. Perhaps he was testing the strength of our blows. Upon himself? What if our blows were deadly? Then he would know of it. Briefly. My point is, your new commander-in-chief relied upon your advice, your majesty. And wasn't it good advice? Well, there is no better judgment in our fair land than your ornamental grace, except for the whole Locke and Gnomes lawsuit you decided to join against those increasingly bizarre self-help groups. Then what is your point, Saul? Seriously, what is it you're trying to say? Why have a figurehead in charge of our legions? Figurehead. If you can't have a commander who can handle situations as they arise, then why don't you take charge yourself? Oh, I see it now. You want me to demote Flash and appoint you in his place. Well... If your superficial majesty feels that perhaps an older and more experienced man, and especially one of our own people, could say better, why I should be delighted to accept the honor of your majesty. There is some reason for this diplomatic move on your part. What is it? Well, there are still bits of him in your hair, for one. Are the other men rebellious because I appointed Flash instead of one of their own numbers? I am no bearer of gossip, your excessive opulence. What others may think is their own business. If they wish to let you know their feelings, they have ways and means to do it. I speak only in your own interest and with the liberty of your major domo. And yes... I do not doubt your words, Sol, but... 
I think you speak one word for me, and two for yourself. You honestly think Flash is incapable of making decisions for himself? I do, my oblivious sovereign. I do. You have a chance to witness that for yourself. Our enemy has taken refuge in a tunnel and blockaded themselves with a wall of... Wait for it. Wait for it, Ice. Your commander has gone to just look over the situation. And you would have... Charged with full forces and gone in after the enemy. I see. Now, my unwitting majesty, I am not trying to go behind your commander's back unfairly. No, I have given you my plan of action. Here he comes now. Hear what he has to say and see for yourself who ought to be at the head of the Blue Magic Army. Well, my prince, what have you to report? My beautiful queen, we found the enemy barricaded behind a wall of solid... Wait for it. Wait for it. Ice. 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 We ice. get, get it. it. Yes. Ice. There is only one thing we can do. And that is? Charge with full forces and go in. Oh, you hear, Sol? You hear what Flash proposes? For today we dine on a bounty of ice cream and snow cones upon finding this chilly treasure trove. Yes, I hear your majesty. Come, Azura, together we shall lead the charge. Leave the enemy be. Attack the ice to transform it into a delightful array of ice cream, snow cones, and frosty snacks for the troops. Follow me! Flash? Oh, yes. I forgot, Azura. Thank you. And then after, we shall... Mm, <laughs> yes? We shall have snow cone battles, ice cream eating contests, and a hilarious award ceremony for the best flavors created. Brave listeners, we close another thrilling adventure of the reasonably amazing adventures of Flash Gordon, the intrepid space voyager. Stay tuned to the station for next week's electrifying episode, Flash Gordon and the Cool Way to Win, Part 2. But fear not, dear listeners, for the adventures don't end here. See amazing characters in full-color pictures next Sunday in the Comic Weekly, which is an integral part of your Sunday newspaper. Next Sunday, prepare for an interstellar journey like no other in the pages of the renowned Full Page Comic Weekly. Wave goodbye to the mundane tabloids as we bring you bigger, bolder illustrations and captions that leap off the page. Get ready for the cosmic mishaps of Captain Starfish. Yes! Black Hole Bart is hot on their trail, eager to claim the secret medical information about Captain Starfish for his own vile purposes. Captain Starfish and his pernicious sidekick, Professor Nebulizer, streak across the skies. As always, he's got a magical long thing that he needs help with right away. That's right, the Professor's Scoff of Wonder. Expect the unexpected, and if the unexpected doesn't happen, expect something else. It's full-throttle fun and exhausting high-octane hilarity and all those other funny fellows, just twice as large. Is it a metaphor? You decide! How much better you will like them in the full-page Comic Weekly and enjoy a half-hour's good clean fun with the award-winning Italian astronomer, Tony Emmy Dudapipis. What new peril awaits our fearless heroes? Can the forces of evil ever truly be vanquished? And don't forget to listen to another thrilling chapter in the reasonably amazing adventures of Flash Gordon, the intrepid space voyager. 